Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how to get wheel support and force feedback in uh, Roblox. Uh, we're going to be using a third party program that I made called Row Wheel Bridge. Uh, the GitHub is in the description. You guys can read and edit all the code. I think help would be very much appreciated. Uh, and those of you looking to implement it in your games, there's some light documentation down here. So um, to get it installed, you want to open up that link in the description and go down to that releases tab of the GitHub and you should download this file, find a folder and extract that um, in the folder. You can't run the program within there. And we're gonna be running this program and calibrating our wheel for the first time. So you make sure your wheel is connected, make sure it's the power supplies in the wall and everything. And if you want force feedback, you're gonna have to run it as administrator. So you need administrator privileges to run this program. So you're gonna open it up and it's gonna kinda give you a list on what it thinks might be a wheel. Um, and right here I have my Logitech G920 with four axes and 18 buttons and it supports force feedback. So it's gonna ask us to select our device for steering, uh, number nine, so let's hit nine and enter. It's gonna initialize everything and some people have separated pedals. Um, I don't, so we're gonna be selecting that same one for our pedals here, number nine. And some people have separate shifters that's a little less common. Again, this is only um, available with paddle shifters. Uh, we're gonna just hit no since I have paddle shifters on the wheel here. Uh, and it's gonna start our calibration process. So the first thing it's gonna ask us to do is we're gonna be pushing the throttle all the way down and you wanna hold the throttle down, hit enter and release. Then it's gonna ask you to hold the brake all the way down and then hit enter and then you can release. And then some people don't have clutch pedals, some people do. So if you do, I have a clutch pedal, you go forward with this and then it's gonna ask you to hold that clutch all the way down, hit enter, and then release it. So next up, we're gonna do the steering wheel calibration. It's gonna ask you to turn it all the way to the left until it locks and hit enter. Then it's gonna ask you to turn all the way to the right and hit enter. So you can center your steering wheel now and it's gonna ask us to calibrate our buttons. If you have paddle shifter buttons, then you can go for this, I do, so I'm gonna hit yes. So we're gonna hold down the button for shift up, right? And then we're gonna let go and then we're gonna do the same for that shift down and it's gonna save that calibration. So what this did was it made a JSON file in the directory where we ran the program and you're not gonna have to do this setup process again because of this calibration file, which is great. We can hit enter and now we see that the bridge is active. You can kinda get a live run of all your controls here. Um, if you didn't do your clutch, then it'll just say not available. So far, the only game that supports force feedback with this program is my game called Rosim. So we're going to go load up into Rosim real quick, and I'm going to show you the setup process for force feedback with Rosim. All right, so I've loaded into Rosim here, um, and the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go up into the sim settings up in the top right, and there's going to be three tabs, steering, simulation, and wheel. What we care about is wheel. So you're going to want to change your lock to lock angle to the amount of degrees that you're steering has so by default it's at 900 and my wheel is a 900 degree wheel that means if I turn all the way to the left I'm gonna have to turn the wheel 900 degrees for it to be fully locked to the right some people have a 1080 degree some people have some more than that that's just a setting you can change and then we're gonna go ahead and enable sim steering here that's the most important part what that does is it bypasses all of the assists and everything with steering to make sure you get a good experience and a raw input of the wheels and the next thing we're gonna be tuning here is gonna be our force feedback gain. So people with stronger wheels, you're probably gonna to wanna to turn this down, but if you have a, um, a less crazy wheel, then it's probably fine to have it a bit up. But I, I usually have it down around 0.1. So the next thing that we wanna go look at is in our key binds menu. And so in here, you can change all of the linearity and the axes and all this stuff about your controls. But what we're gonna be focusing on is if we go down to the uh, steering axis, we wanna change the input speed all the way up and that release speed all the way up as well so that we get instant feedback from a wheel and to test it you should be able to move your wheel and see that graph kind of change so we're gonna go ahead and spawn a car here uh, and if we get in um, you should be able to turn your wheel let's go into first person you should be able to see direct um, one-to-one -one steering with your wheel here and you should also see that your program is running in the background so let's go ahead and drive our car here and you can see I'm getting full force feedback support. Uh, thanks for watching. If you want to play Rosim, there's a link in the description. Uh, and all other files and stuff will be on the GitHub.